It's because your hair's down. You think you're cool because you got your fucking hair down, bitch? No, it still looks a mess. Hey beauties, it's Court. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a products I regret buying video. I'm not going to do the disclaimer that everybody does because it's dumb. If you like something that I dislike, it's because you're different. We're all different. It is what makes the world a beautiful place. So without rambling, I'm just going to hop right into the video. If you would like to see some products that I wish I hadn't spent my husband's hard earned money on, then just keep your cute little ass right where it's at. So I have my little bag of regrets here and we're just gonna kind of open it up and dig right in. The first thing I pull out is a mascara. This is from LA Girl. It's called the Mega Mascara. The reason I bought it is because the packaging is adorable. It has this pink handle and it's got like these little crisscrosses with little gemstone wannabe kind of thingies in it. It's so cute. What the, f look at this. What is that? Why did that just happen? It's like the thing. Oh, okay, I see what happened. The thingy that's supposed to wipe the mascara off is like stuck in the lid down there. So there we go, just added to the list, I guess. It is not a good mascara. The, the formula could be good, but I can't tell you because the wand doesn't distribute any product onto your eyelashes. So I got most of the mascara off. If you look at the wand, it's actually a really nice looking wand. It's very big, very fluffy, but it's a little bit too dense and it doesn't really grab onto your eyelashes. And it's a shame because it looks like it would work really well if it worked the way it looks like it works. Does that make sense? You know what I mean. So the next thing I pulled out is this 90 second wrinkle reducer from Hydroxetone. I actually had ordered this off a of Hot Look when Hydroxetone was on there quite a few weeks ago. I ordered this, a cleanser and a toner. The cleanser and the toner are decent. I don't reach for them all the time. They're kind of like backups. But this is just, I mean, to start it off, the packaging is terrible. The little pump doesn't work. Mine at least doesn't work. So I have to open it up. I have to like unscrew, look at it. You see all that powder falling? And when I unscrew it, I have to like like do one of these to get it on my finger and then I dab it on my face. And then when I put the, the lid back in, it still has all this excess product up in the top here. So when you go to put the lid back in, it kind of just spills over and then you push it shut and this happens. So first of all, the packaging fucking sucks. Second of all, when you put this on your face, it doesn't get rid of your wrinkles. All it does is dry in the spots that you put it and turn into white crustiness. So I'm not even sure, like has, if anybody's ever tried this and had success with it and maybe I'm using it wrong, please let me know because I would love to get rid of my wrinkles in 90 seconds. This is just not going to do So it. the next thing I have is an eyeshadow palette from Lorac. Beautiful, beautiful champagne kind of pink packaging. Horrible shadows inside. You can see the colors in here are very beautiful. It's a gorgeous neutral palette. I was really, really excited about this when I got it. I actually duped a couple of these shadows with my Naked 3 from Urban Decay. There was some similarities there, but the quality of this palette is just not there whatsoever. This is called the Champagne Dreams eyeshadow palette, and I think it's one of the ones that are like 15 bucks or something like that, which for the amount of shadow that you get is a great value. But like I said, it's just, they're not pigmented. They don't blend well. Like anything that can be bad about a shadow, they're dry, is wrong with these. Even if you look at them on my fingers, you can see how extremely powdery they are. I will swatch them and you can watch the excess powder just fall everywhere. And they, you, did you see that? It's just powder, pow and it's not like in a good way, like with normally with Lorac shadows, when they're powdery, it's like, it's because they're so creamy and so buttery, smooth and soft. These, it's kind of like the opposite. They're really powdery because they're so dry. This one shade in the middle here looks beautiful when you swatch it on your hand, but for some reason, it just doesn't show up on your eyes. So this palette was a definite miss for me. I do keep it though because it looks beautiful in picture. So the next thing I have here is a lipstick and it is from L'Oreal and it's a shame I really like L'Oreal products. There are a lot of them out there that are amazing. It's one of my favorite drugstore brands but this lipstick smells so bad. Even if scents don't bother you, this will bother you. The shade is beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's pigmented. It's this beautiful nude brown color. It's called Brazil Nut number 850 and the formula, it's so creamy smooth, but I just cannot get over the scent of this. I mean, even the packaging is just beautiful. L'Oreal has gorgeous, gorgeous packaging. 
but it just stinks. Like I, I can't, you know, that's it. That's, I hate it because it stinks. And it's not like one of those scents that fades away as you wear it. No, you smell this all day long. I am not good at describing scents, but trust me, don't waste your money. It smells really bad. The next thing I have is a higher end product. It's from Laura Geller Beauty. It's the Baked Gelato Swirl. Baked Gelato Vivid Swirl Blush in the shade Cantaloupe. It looks beautiful in the packaging. It's like this really, really pretty kind of very bright pink orange but there's pretty much no pigment to it. Trust me when I say, I'm like an NC or NW like 17 and this does not show up on my face at all. You can swatch it up heavy enough to show, but when it's blended out, even just the littlest bit, like it's really pretty, but when you start to blend it out at all, it just like, I'm not even pressing at all. Like I'm just kind of swiping my finger over it. And when you blend it out, it just completely disappears. And it's a shame because the highlighters in this line are amazing. Like the Gilded Honey Highlighter, holy fucking grail. Like it will always be a part of my collection. Amazing. But this blush was just not a hit. I have quite a few things, but hopefully we won't be here for too long. You guys know I do like to ramble though. So we shall see what happens. We might end up having another 25 minute video. The next thing is something you guys might be upset about because I know a lot of people love this thing. This is the Lip Exfoliator from e.l.f. And I've tried this three times. This is my third tube of it because people swore up and down that it was so good and every time I got it the first couple times I used it it was it worked really well it exfoliated it moisturized it did its little thing but then I got down to about the fourth use and it just basically turned into sand on a stick there's nothing moisturizing about it anymore it's just grit it's just like a stick of grit. It's painful. It doesn't exfoliate. It just falls off the stick, gets stuck to your lips. It just, it doesn't do anything at all for exfoliating my lips. I can't even use it because it's so dried out. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is so disappointing to me because it's another L'Oreal product and I love other things from this line. It's their Lumi line and this is the True Match Lumi Healthy Luminous Makeup. I love this foundation but the only thing that sucks about it is it settles into my fine lines like you're trying to cozy in there and make little homes like I just I can't deal with how bad it settles into my lines it's the bottom line it's beautiful foundation amazing coverage luminous finish like it does everything it's supposed to do the shade matches me wonderfully but I just cannot like I look in the mirror not even an hour later after I put this on and I just look like an old lady. Like it accentuates lines that I literally don't even have on my face. They have a new one coming out in February. It's like a puff one, like in a little compact. Oh my God, I hope it's a light, it's supposed to be like a lighter coverage. So hopefully it won't sink into my fine lines as bad. I'm really excited to try that. But as for this one, I honestly am gonna end up throwing this in the trash. I keep using it because I keep wanting to love it. I literally, I used it like a couple days ago, but I just can't deal with how bad it sinks into my line. We might as well go ahead and get the other foundation out of the way and the other thing that you guys are probably gonna hate me for, I can't roll with it. I just can't get down with it. This breaks my heart. You guys know I love Too Faced products. If you've ever seen my Instagram at all, it is full of Too Faced products because I own a ton of them. This foundation has a beautiful finish. It's gorgeous on the skin, but again, it just settles into my fine lines so badly. And I also have never, ever had problems with a foundation separating on my skin. No matter what kind of primer I use with this, I've used more than half of this bottle trying to get this to work on my face. Mixing it with other foundations, using any kind of primer, high-end, drugstore, doesn't matter. I just cannot get this to not sink into my fine lines. And it also, my point was that it separates. It um, breaks up around my nose right here, up here, even if I don't wear sunglasses, above my eyebrows and around my mouth is where I noticed it the most. And I mean, if you love this foundation, then I'm so jealous because I really wish that I could, but it's basically $50. It's going to get thrown in the trash. I mean, obviously I'm not going to throw it away because look at this packaging, but you know what I mean? I'm not, I, I'm not going to use it. I mean, I might, 
knowing me, I'm probably still going to try and make it work for like the rest of the bottle. I'll probably end up using it just because I need to use it because it's two face. I mean, how can I neglect my baby? But it's just, it didn't work for me. It didn't work for me. I have a couple brushes that I want to share with you as well. I guess we'll get those out of the way real quick. The first one that I want to share with you is from Real Techniques. This is the sculpting brush. Real Techniques has some of the best brushes on the market. High-end, drugstore, in-between, doesn't matter. Real Techniques has an incredible, amazing brushes. This one was a complete miss for me. It's the sculpting brush, and as you can see, it's shaped to be a contour brush. For me, this is way too dense to be a contour brush. It picks up way too much product at one time. And the fact that it's slanted makes it skip when I blend it. If I'm gonna use a contour brush that's shaped anything like this, it needs to be flat all the way across the top, and that's the only way that I can get it to blend well for me. The only thing that this comes in handy for when it comes to contouring is laying product down. And even then, it's a little bit thick for how I like to, you know, contour. It's it's just, it's too fat. It doesn't go in as precisely as I would like it to. Another thing is it's cut extremely uneven. Like when I look at it this way, this side is higher than this side and it's got like shorter bristles in the middle, longer ones on the outside. And it's just like, there's no rhyme or reason to how the hairs are cut on this brush. And I just couldn't get this to work. I also tried using it with foundation and I didn't like it as a foundation brush either because I thought it would be dense enough to be a good one. I just can't get down with foundation brushes. I stopped using them. I started using my beauty blender and I haven't looked back since. Ever since I started using my beauty blender, it's like I can't get a brush to not leave strokes on my face. So I don't know, you might love this as a foundation brush. It's very dense and it's very soft, but for me, I just can't get it to work. The next brush that I have also breaks my heart. It's from Morphe. It's just not, there isn't really anything you can do with it. It's called the M100. And it just pretty much looks like a small blush brush. I mean, this would be a good one to throw in your bag to like touch up on the go or something like that. But as for everyday use, I couldn't really find anything to use this for. I mean, I tried it to highlight. I tried it from my blush. I tried it to contour. I tried to just use it to blend things out, setting my under eye. That's actually what I bought it for initially was to set my under eye with it. But it looked like it was a different shape when I saw it on the website and then I got it and it ended up being, like I thought it was gonna be like thinner like this and it ended up being like a little bit more fluffy and it's also kind of coarse like like when your hand it feels really soft but as soon as you touch it on your face you can tell and when you touch it on your face it's it, it it's all the bristles aren't hit I don't, it's so hard to explain it's like you can feel like two or three of them hitting you at first before you can feel the rest of them. And then it just, it's pokey. This is a pokey brush and it doesn't feel good. And the last brush that I have for you is the Angled Blush Brush from Makeup Academy Professional. You can find this brand. I found this at CVS. I'm not sure where else it's sold. It looks like a beautiful, beautiful blush brush. Looks like it would be perfect. It's nice and soft. It's fluffy. It's not too dense. It's angled. I love angled blush brushes. This motherfucker sheds like you would not believe. I honestly don't know how there's a brush left on top of here. I washed this brush one time and my hair was completely full of sink. My hair was completely full of sink. That really just happened. You have no idea how many times I really do that in my daily life. We have a blanket that's called a Cuzzy Cuddly because I meant to say Cozy Cuddly Blanket and then now it's just our Cuzzy Cuddly because I always mix words up like that. It's terrible. But ever since I washed it and even when I first bought it before I washed it, it just like, it's it, it just hair. Just you, all you have to do is like, you see it? You can see it already sticking up right in the middle there. Terrible. Don't waste your money. And this is like $17 from CVS. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are costing $17? The next thing I have is another eyeshadow palette. This one is from LA Colors. It's called Tea Time. It has some really pretty neutral shades in it and it looks very promising. Isn't it pretty? That's a cute little shadow palette, right? I think there are, LA Colors is like cheap too. You can sometimes you can find it at the dollar store. It's an all shimmer palette. It just has some neutral colors in here. This one is not, <laughs> You guys are probably looking at it like, bitch, you didn't even use it. This is another one that I bought to put into a giveaway. I bought myself one, then I bought a second one to put into a giveaway. But after I used it myself, I was like, nah, I'm not going to give this away. 
Um, so you can see instantly the shadows are pretty powdery after you touch them and there just isn't really any pigment to them at all. They're just, they're just not very pigmented. They're not, not really showing up much at all. This one brown one right here might, yeah, see, like you can do finger swatches on your hands and stuff like that. But the true test is when you start to blend something out, if it still exists after you blend it out. Like you see, this one's pretty much, you know, gone now after I blended it. So this is just not good. Okay, two more products and then we're done. They're both lip glosses. The first one is a NYX Intense Butter Gloss and this is in the shade Black Cherry Tart. I love Intense Butter Glosses. They're incredible. The formula is amazing. They're affordable. I cannot say enough good things about them. This shade is beautiful. It's a gorgeous black cherry shade. Look at that. One swipe. Look how pigmented that is. That's like completely opaque on the back of my hand. But it is, I want to do it again just because it's so pretty. I just want to paint my whole hand with it. Like, it's so gorgeous. You should see it on the lips, too. It's such a beautiful, vampy purple. This is one of the messiest lip glosses I have ever put on my lips. You put this on, and all you have to do is literally ask somebody how their day is going, and all of a sudden you have it, like, on your fucking forehead, and you have no idea how it even got there. It just spreads, and it, like, feathers, and it gets outside of your lips way too easily. I can't be dealing with high maintenance lip glosses my kids are high maintenance enough my lip gloss has to be put it on out the door so like I said the intense butter glosses are really amazing really great formula it's just this particular one is extremely messy I love how these close like you know how you close the lip gloss and it's got like that little click at the end like the Jeffree Star lipsticks do oh is that not like the most satisfying thing ever like you can't hear it but you can feel it and you're like Boom, that bitch is closed. It's not leaking in my purse or nothing. So next lip gloss that I have and the final item of this video, this is a flower lip gloss. It's in the shade LR5 Classic Nude. These are called the High Shine Lip Lacquers. These are also amazing lip glosses. So it's like, you know, I keep putting, I keep putting lines in this video that are awesome, but like specific products that aren't good, you know? Like, cause I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna say, oh, all these lip glosses are bad because this one is. No, I own three of these and the other two are incredible. But just this specific shade, it's kind of like the same thing as the butter gloss. It's messy, it's really pretty. The color is so pretty and it's so opaque and beautiful. Look at that. It's just two little swatches right there up at the top. But it's it's kind of it's gonna be kind of hard to explain why I don't like this. It just kind of it settles into all the lines on your lips and it really really accentuates them. It just it's one of those nudes. It's gonna be really hard to explain. It's one of those nudes that not only like settles into every line and super accentuates them. It gathers at the center of your lips and the, it makes it like really gloppy looking like it doesn't really feel gloppy but it looks really gloppy on your lips is that a new word do we just invent a new word gloppy gloppy gloss galapagos gloss galapagos galapagos islands what is wrong with me? So like I said, I do own other glosses from this line that are very good that I really like. Is this specific one in Classic Nude is just not good. So guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully I can save you some money in the future. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. I love you guys so damn much. Make sure you subscribe on your way out and I will see you in my next video. Mwah. <sighs> how can I say that? How do you guys know if this stuff's going to work for you or not? Just by going by what I say, I guess? Because I know if Kathleen doesn't like something, I ain't fucking buying it. So like I said, the whole line is good. The whole line. If the whole line was good, you wouldn't have anything in your regrets video. So the last, um... <sighs> Come on, you got one more product. One more. One more product. So the next thing I'm pulling out is my dick. No, I'm just kidding. What the fuck is wrong with this zipper? <laughs> Oh my god, look at that highlight. Holy shit. I'm giving the sun a run for its money. Hey beauties, it's Court. Welcome back to my channel. I am bringing today to you... What did you just say? What was that? So I got my little bag... So I got my little bag right here. Ugh. I don't know why that helps, but it does. Just kind of like... Get a little bit of vomit, like, noise and vomit out of your mouth real quick. This one really is hard to open. What is that face? I can't open that.
I really can't get it open though. I washed it one time and it literally looked like somebody shit. I can't say that. I can't look like, I, I can't say that it looked like somebody shaved her chocha. Like, you can't say that. Who says that? Who would even think to say that? Like, well, I mean, it's, it kind of looks like pubic hairs. <laughs> oh, thanks for the image, Courtney. I appreciate that. Now we're all going to put blush on with pubic hair. Extremely, 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 extremely. Shake it out, girl. Shake it out. Shake it out, girl. Ooh, look at that. Mm. I don't know if you guys realize, but I literally sit up here and talk to my phone, well, my camera, whatever, like, it's my best friend. Like, I, there's so much stuff, like, even that I don't put in the bloopers, that I say to my phone, like, I'm just, like, you know, like, talk about stuff that I did today, and, like, it, I, don't know, I just say all kinds of stuff, like, I'm talking to my best friend. Because I am. We're supposed to start that whole thing over. What am I doing? Why do I keep doing this? What is this? Why are you doing that? Hmm. So, guys, that's going to do it. Put your hands down.